Hey, a pleasant good morning, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a look into the Tampa Bay Rays clinching the playoff spot, the first team to clinch a playoff spot in the AL. As always, if you like the content, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. And at the end of the video, you can subscribe up top over here on that night um, subscribe widget that they have here on YouTube. But let's get right into why the Rays were able to again win their division <clears throat> this year. They were able to get the division, which is the go to the going to seal. The, the, that's going to get sealed. They clinched the playoff spot, and they are sitting pretty this year. It's because they instill a winning culture from the bottom up. All of their teams have been winning from single A up and have been doing great things and developing great prospects and also just bringing in different veterans that then all of a sudden have success um, what needed to be called upon, like Dietrich Ends, for example, who has about eight appearances and has pitched well when needed. Colin McHugh, who's been at it for a while. They bring in those good Wiley veterans. They brought in Robertson, who hasn't worked as well, coming off a of pitching good for Team USA. But now they have Nick Anderson back, who's only had five appearances, so he's going to be really fresh for the playoffs. So that's scary if you're a team facing the Rays. They have Louis Patino, who's just going to keep getting better, and maybe he can catch a fire in the playoffs with the skill and pitch repertoire he has and already has been pitching pretty darn well. You have Drew Rasmussen, who's been pitching well. I mean, realistically, other than the Wakas of the world and the David Robertsons, there's not many guys you look to in that bullpen that struggle. The Rays always find their pitching, whether it's guys that have been struggle bunnying somewhere else and they're able to bring them in, to use a term from Kevin Millar, or it's just guys that they're able to develop really well and get it done. If you look at a guy in the bullpen that's been super clutch this year, especially with Anderson being out, is JT Chargo pitching in 53 games. It's a 250-40 RA, 50 strikeouts, and only 1.03 whip. And he's 6-1 and one as a freaking reliever. So, I mean, this is what sets apart teams. You have the great bullpen, and you have the good rotation that's able to get you at least through five innings usually, and then you can give it to that very good bullpen. But the thing that changes the Rays, normally the Rays are a team that rely more on one end of the ball than the other end of the ball to win, whether it's that year, that given year that their offense is doing good enough and their pitching is good enough in the starting rotation and the bullpen's carrying them, or it's one way or the other, the bullpen's carrying them and the rotation's solid enough to win without having the greatest offense. But this year, they actually have a very good combination. You have a good starting rotation that's pitching rule, albeit young and experienced catch. I have to see how they do in the playoffs. But it's a it's a good bullpen that's pitching very well together, and that is not as much young experience catching. And again, you have Nick Anderson coming back as well. But the big thing, the third thing is other than having the bullpen and the rotation, you have a very good lineup this year that you added Nelson Cruz, the Tom Brady of baseball, into, for God's sakes, during the deadline as well. So you got a great Nelly Cruz, and they got one of the best power hitting catchers beyond Salvador Perez and probably Osmani Grandal in most years other than this season. In Mike Zunino, who also calls a hell of a game. So that's a big repertoire to why they're doing really good. And that's also why they have Francisco Mejia from the Padres. It's going to take a little bit to develop and really come into his own. But he calls a hell of a game and is a whiz back there calling the game as well. So the Padres, or not the Padres, excuse me, he's from the Padres. The Rays, getting him from the Padres, got him being that smart witty, using their heads to get guys that they know just call the game well and just fit into their scheme well that they know. They don't need to have developed right away because they have aforementioned Mike Zunino. Then they have the guys like Brandon Lau in the um, lineup that is not hitting the best average season, but has 34 and runs and 86 RBIs. And nowadays, the batting average is not the biggest tool anymore. It's more of the ribbies and what you're driving in. Joey Wendell has a very solid season of 271, 11 home runs and 53 RBIs. So the lineup really comes together. You have Randy Rosarina after having a great first campaign, answering again at 271, 19 homers and 65 RBIs and 15 stolen bags to go with it. So he's having a very good season. Jordan Luplo is a guy that feasts off lefties. Doesn't have a good overall batting average because when he faces righties, he can't do a damn thing most of the time. But he feasts off lefties, so they mix in all those good depth guys that have some veteran experience that have been around the shed as well. And then you have a two fifty nine average, 10 home runs, and 57 RBIs to 13 stolen bases for Manny Margot. And if you look in this outfield, you have Reddy Rosarina, Kiermaier, Margot, Luplo, Meadows, and Brett Phillips, who actually has started to come into his own in terms of RBI potential. Still not the best batting average, but 13 home runs and 42 RBIs 
to 14 stolen bases. So maybe he's starting to get into it going, but he's also just a great defender. You know the Rays are going to go after those guys. They always have great defense. That's the other thing. I mentioned before, great defense this year. They have a great lineup. Great pitching from the bullpen to the starting rotation. They're not a team that's just two-dimensional or one-dimensional winning off of one end or two ends. They're winning off of every end. They are a great team in the bullpen, a great team in the rotation, a great team defensively, and a very, very, very good offensive team. That might be the thing that you would want to see because of the Kiermaier's of the world, because of the Phillips, because of... um having some guys that are a little bit more inconsistent in there. Obviously, you got Meadows at 103 RBIs, but you have some lower batting average. That lineup might be the thing you would label at just very good and not at the great status. But either way, having something very good and three things is great, that's sure plenty enough to get you deep into another playoff run if you're the Tampa Bay Rays. And this is going to be a very dangerous team coming into the playoffs. I hope you all enjoyed this video recapping the Rays being the first AL team to clinch a playoff berth. Congratulations to Tampa Bay Rays fans. You are in the playoffs. You clinch the playoff berth. Looking to make a big long run in the postseason as well. And your team definitely looks poised to do it. I ain't making any predictions to jinx anything, but they definitely look poised to do it because of the aforementioned reasons in this video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This has been Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borick. Peace out, everybody. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day. And as always, like I said at the beginning, subscribe over here on the widget if you want it, or like, comment, or subscribe down below. Share the video out to all your followers. We really appreciate the support. And stay safe out there. And as always, let's. Go raise for this video since I made a video so that it wouldn't be as always. But for this video, let's go raise since this is going out to the raise fan. As you guys made the playoffs, congratulations, peace out, and stay safe.